for me, what was always drawing me to the story of, of Shelby and Miles and the, the Shelby American team and Ford and Ferrari and the rivalry were the unique group of characters that gathered together, um, all of whom were so opposite. I mean, you had, even among the corporate world of Ford, you had such different personalities as, as Henry Ford II and Iacocca and Leo Beebe. In the world of in the world of, of racing and hot rodding, you know, Carol Shelby is kind of a salesman and a hustler, and a character who was um, kind of compensating for the fact he could no longer race himself. And um, and Ken Miles was a completely different character, kind of a hothead, almost almost unable um, to somehow be flexible enough or polite enough to kind of survive. Um, in in more trying or stressful social situations, and so um, and you add to that kind of all the other characters that came along with Shelby American, who were all kind of out of the Los Angeles and Southern California kind of hot rod tradition. You'd had kind of expert engineers, guys who had come out of the war and kind of gotten into cars. You had kind of surfy hot rodder kind of characters. You had. Um, beatniks and and just racers, drag racers, all of whom were part of this world of cars in the mid '60s in in the Southern California area. What was also so interesting to me was the way each of the characters' own challenges personally played into the way the movie resolved itself. In Ken Miles' case, a guy who is unbendable and won't compromise and always seeking perfection, at the climax of the film has to actually bend and compromise. And, and in Shelby's case, a guy who's talked himself into everything and, and is, a, is a natural salesman and a kind of, uh, almost you'd say, a kind of per professional persuader, um, he has to kind of speak honestly to Ken Miles and deal with the ramifications of the race afterward in a more honest way um, that he can't kind of talk or dance his way through. I think it's a movie about friendship. I think it's a movie about brotherhood. I think it's a movie about the things we accomplish um, in connection and in collaboration with others. And that w our own selves, we all can become enlarged and extended and our abilities heightened by those around us. And that the unique cast of characters in this film all could never have accomplished what they had accomplished without each of the other players and that and their egos may want to think each of them did it on their own but what is so beautiful is that that there is no one who didn't play a part whether it's Ford and its engineering team whether it's Shelby and his kind of um, hired on team whether it's uh, drivers like, uh, like Ken Miles who were instrumental in, in actually figuring out the car and making it work on the road but so the short answer is I think it's a film about friendship about brotherhood about um, and about the people we lose um, that change us. Shelby saw Ken as a driver that might even be better than him. Um, that, you know, one thing, we all have things we're really good at and what comes with what our skills is also an eye for other people who have the same skills. Um, and I think Shelby recognized in Ken when he saw him on the track and he saw him examining a car or checking it out that this was someone who rivaled or exceeded his own instincts behind the wheel. There is such a thing as reaching perfection and that you are, that this, the road is finite, the car is finite. These aren't um, ephemeral things. So there must be then the perfect way to drive them. Meaning if these things are real and hard and math and physics relate to them, then I'm the only fallible element. Um, I'm the only unpredictable element in relation to all these knowns, the road, the weather, the air, the car, its capabilities, its brakes. And so Ken was always after trying to be, um, to almost take himself out, of, to be so perfect that he matched the kind of dependability and 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 um, uh, that he matched the perfection of the vehicle itself. Ultimately, what was so intense about the GT40 was the amount of muscle in it. I mean, the challenge of the car was 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 never can it go fast enough? In a way, they put as much engine. I mean, we depict a lot of it. They put as much engine as they could possibly pack into that size car. 
more engine than in a sense anyone else had. What I mean by engine is power and speed. And um, the challenge of the vehicle was how to stop it, how to slow it down. In a straight drag race, the GT40 would have beat the Ferrari hands down any time, but their challenges were different. The Ferrari was a beautifully handling car, which could accelerate and decelerate with perfection. Although it just didn't have the juice, it didn't have the power of the GT40. The GT40 was a kind of, uh, in the American tradition, a kind of muscle car, but, had, but didn't have the finesse. Um, and that was why it took them a few years. A lot of the research we did was to try and recreate not only the, the charting, the way the cars changed over the years, both in body and engine, um, and driving styles changed, and obviously body paint and all that, but, but also how they, how they drove them and how they related to them, um, all of that. What is a real challenge and hard to convey is that every time someone makes a full lap in our movie, they are passing through five or six different locations. There are shots from Agua Dulce, California, one location in Atlanta, another location in Atlanta, a third location far from Atlanta, then back to the third location from here, and then another location in the Georgia, in, in, in rural Georgia, and then back to Agua Dulce, California. Both Matt and Christian are incredible drivers, so I had one huge advantage. Um, both of them have driven in films before, been trained to drive. Christian's a motocross driver for years, has raced motorcycles, um, has kind of quit doing it out of fear of getting injured, but it was his obsession for years. And so both of them are natural drivers and look great behind the wheel. But most of the other drivers in the film, everyone playing drivers, are drivers. They are people who drive race cars and actors as as a as a hobby in the in many of them a hobby that only consists of their one appearance in a movie our movie they're drivers and um, because most of what I felt like they were going to have to do wouldn't be expert line readings but in fact look like the real thing behind a wheel and. It also was obviously a kind of cost savings that we could have people doing both duty, that I wouldn't have to double. Um, I, every time someone got out of a car, I didn't have to replace them with an actor. A lot of our drivers were playing the drivers who were real, literally behind the wheel. What was most important to us was in an age when everything feels possible because of computer graphics and visual effects, we wanted to make a movie where you felt the high of being on the road and not a kind of uh, uh, tentpole movie digital simulation of it, but the reality of it. And that visual effects, for me, my kind of evangelism on the movie was that I always wanted them to be supplemental about completing um, grandstands or sets we couldn't afford to build, but that the action on the road would be real and would feel real. Um, um, and um, our driving team, that was very much their, their kind of mission statement, was to try and achieve everything they could as safely as possible as it happened. I thought there was a lot of Ken in Christian, and I think one of the revelations of the film is when you get to see so much of himself as a working class kid from England, as a guy who loves motorsports, as a kind of passionate, um, perfectionist, um, uh, as a family man. Another aspect of Christian that really connects with the movie is he's a great father and a husband and loves his family and it's where he'd rather be than almost anywhere else. And um, all those aspects of his character, um, his personal character fuse with Ken and I think give him a chance to give audiences a taste of a, re of a really um, honest piece of himself. The role of Carol Shelby, who I think Matt is very much an aggressive sportsman, he, he pushes himself very hard, I could connect with, even though it's more imagination, is what I would feel if I had to stop. What would that feel like if I had to unplug the creative high I get from acting? And I think that um, um, in many ways I think Matt was a natural at kind of that, that uh, the, I'm trying to find the right word for it, the kind of almost musicality of Carol Shelby, that he speaks in a kind of, that he kind of mesmerizes. I think that uh, Matt and I worked a long time on the scenes where, um, in the script, where he kind of holds forth or tells a story. 
and you almost fall into the spell of his words. And um, I think it was really important that Shelby have that ability because in many ways, his character, um, it's both his strength and his liability is that he can talk his way out of almost anything. And when, some, when someone can talk their way out of almost anything, it means they've lived an almost unaccountable life. So in some ways, the movie is very much about Shelby also having to kind of own pain or own loss or feel it and maybe not have a way to dance out of it. Ray McKinnon as, uh, you know, as, as, as Shelby's sideman um, and, and lead engineer is a, um, it brings a kind of drawl and a kind of, he's almost the brakes on, you know, he's, he, his character is almost the brakes on Shelby's. Um, I, I, if Shelby is always wheeling and dealing, this is his Jiminy Cricket, kind of always trying to bring things back to reality. I think what Katrina so beautifully captures is both someone who's living with the parameters of what it is to be a wife in the early 1960s, but is also pushing against them and is, and is, is making demands on her husband and even um, getting involved in their future in a way that is pushing at the edges of like, I don't want to find out about this shit later. You need to talk to me. You need to talk to me about our finances. You need to talk to me about your decisions. Um, and is also a fan, rooting, and, um, and also praying that he comes back. First time I saw Tracy Letts, was in Homeland and um, playing the CIA director and kind of a villain of, of, that, of that series. And I felt like he was one of the best things in the show. And, and I, since then, I've always felt jealous and startled every time, jealous of the directors who get to work with him and startled, how did he pick that or why is he doing that? And of course, it has a lot to do. He's a Pulitzer Prize winning writer himself and he's got other stuff to do except act. But the... I was thrilled when he took um, to the role of Henry Ford II. If anything was important to keep you locked into this movie, if anything was vital for me, it was that you felt that these characters were always one blink of an eye away from death, that, the, that these things, these were hulking beasts, these cars. Um, there were no roll bars. The, the shells were made of aluminum or fiberglass or some combination. I think it very often felt for them like you were riding at 200 miles an hour in a cardboard box, um, that the, there was no real protection. Um, and that I wanted you to feel in the images and the sound and the way the light is playing in the cab of the car, um, that you are flying in this kind of crazy, um, fragile cockpit. Um, and I think both Fate and I wanted very much to get you in the race, you know. I had one producer on the film say at one point to me like, well, there's only so many ways you can shoot cars, you know, um, meaning are you gonna pan like this? Or are you gonna travel along like this? And I was like, we're not gonna do any of those. Meaning my thing was like, let's get in the cars. I've seen, I don't wanna cover it like they do on TV. Meaning I, I think the way it's gonna feel like a movie is if the coverage of the race feels like nothing you ever saw watching you know wide world of, world of sports on the weekend that that it's you're much more with the driver breathing with the driver feeling the road feeling every decision they're making with the gear shift um, with the steering wheel feeling the weather pressing against you and all the other oppositional forces against their vehicle and their success i hope the film beyond the splendor of the period and the period racing and the beauty of the cars i hope what you really get from it um, is, is a yearning to have friends like that um, or, to, or to cherish the ones you have that are like that. And that the, because for me, the movie is all about these connections between these guys and, and, their, and, and all of them in, in an effort to make, to do the best they can to achieve something that has been unachieved. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey, you guys!